Hey everybody, welcome back to part three of the Quake 2 Remastered Id Vault. In this video series, we are going over this menu item, the Id Vault, that has been put into the Quake 2 Remastered. It's had a bunch of goodies inside of it. So far, we've covered concept art in the first video and development in the second video. So if you haven't seen those, stop this right now and go check those out. In today's video, the third part, we are going to go over the weapons. I have a feeling this one's going to be a little bit quicker than the other two videos, but let's just get right into it. And again, if you don't know what this is all about, please stop right now and go watch part one. It will explain everything. All right, we're hopping into part three, weapons. All right, let's scroll to the top of the weapons menu here and start checking it out. They each have a blurb, which I will read, and then we'll click in and look at the model. The grapple. Originally created to tow drop bods in zero gravity environments, the grapple was reappropriated by some marines during their downtime for entertainment purposes. This alternative usage was quickly banned by upper command after a few too many concussions, but that has done little to discourage their use in the field. Now if you remember from part 2, the grapple was originally a flare gun and it was repurposed to become a grappling hook. Let's click into it here. Now we can toggle between this model and the original, so let's do that. There's the high res and the original. And if I remember correctly, you could only use the grapple originally in Capture the Flag. All right, blaster. This is the standard issue rechargeable energy sidearm. It does not require ammunition, useful for taking down guards as well as exploding barrels and setting off shootable buttons and secret doors. Keep one on you at all times. Yep, the starting weapon, here we go, the uh, blaster. If you recall in the uh, part two video, it showed early renditions of the blaster that looked like a target checkout gun. So this is definitely a lot better here. And going, uh, let's hide the controls and switch between the two. So old model, new model. Very cool. It's cool to see the lore and to kind of learn a little bit more about Quake 2 just through these blurbs. It's really great. Chain Fist. This is an enormous arm mounted chainsaw. It's perfect when you need to RIP a wide swath in a room full of baddies. I think for this one, we'll turn the animation off. Then we can switch between the two. So original, remastered, original, remastered. So they kind of bumped up the geometry, made it a little bit more detailed. The chain fist, I believe, was originally in an expansion pack for Quake 2. Shotgun. This uses shells for ammunition. The spread of the shotgun blast makes close combat more damaging, but long range attacks easier and perfect for the less than proficient marksman. The shotgun is effective against strong guards and flyers. Original and remastered. Super Shotgun. This is the uncompromising big brother to the shotgun. Choose your shots effectively. The slow firing rate may only give you a few chances to bring down the enemy before he's able to engage you up close. It eats more shells than the shotgun, but the show is well worth it. Definitely one of the best id software double barrel shotguns in my opinion. So there's the original and there's the remastered. So they didn't do too much with it. They just increased the texture fidelity for the remaster it looks like. The machine gun. Although this weapon is easy to use, its lightweight will shake you around a bit. Fire in short bursts until you can effectively steady your aim. So Quake 2 came out in 1997. There's the original by the way. Here's the remaster. Quake 2 came out in 1997. And I don't remember if any of those guns in Quake had recoil. So is the machine gun like the first gun in video game history with recoil? Somebody can fact check me on that one, but certainly up there is one of the first. The ETF rifle. It's powerful, efficient, and able to pierce armor. What more could you ask for? This weapon fires explosive tip flechettes that pack a deadly wallop. I'm not quite sure what ETF stands for, but it's basically a nail gun. Let's show the original here. And then they remastered. It's interesting, if you look at the original, the texture kind of moves a little bit. Or maybe the model moves, almost as if the polys on the model got kind of shifted around with the animation. So they definitely fixed that with the new version. 
All right, the chain gun. The chain gun makes mincemeat out of your enemy, but requires an insane amount of ammunition. The long spin up and spin down time makes the chain gun most effective for sustained attacks. If you remember in part two, I said I liked the original chain gun model better. That's still the case. I just felt like it showed more of the, of the gun. It was just a little bit more detailed. Here's the original, so a lot more angular in the model. You can see that in the animation. It's a lot rounder in the remaster. Grenades. Twist a grenade to activate the fuse timer. The longer you hold an active grenade, the farther you'll throw it. Just remember to throw it at some point. Throwing the hand grenade does not make a sound, therefore the straw can't easily trace it back to you. I always love the grenades in this game. Let's look at the original model here. I might stop the animation for this one. Here, let's see if I can stop the animation up higher. There we go. So, remastered version, original. So, the texture doesn't look like it changes that much, but it definitely changes the hand positioning a little bit. It's because the hands have added fidelity added to them, more polygons. See, this is the original where it was a lot more angular. So they had to change the hand position, but it's still pretty much spot on. All right, the trap. Lay the trap on the ground and watch as it sucks nearby enemies inside and turns them into power cubes for you to devour. Most Marines have said it tastes like chicken. Kind of basically the uh, Ghostbusters of Quake 2. Here's the remastered, here's the original. It's interesting. I kind of like the original better in this case. I think the texture on the remastered is better. It's more contrasty, but the modeling on the old one, I just kind of like it a little bit better. There's something about it. Huh. It's interesting. Tesla. Toss the Tesla, and once it activates, deadly tendrils of electricity lash out at any enemy unlucky enough to wander nearby. It's an awesome area of denial weapon. So again, let's remove this. It's as good as it's gonna get here. I'll switch between the original and remaster. Not too much of a difference, just adding a little, little bit more fidelity as I call it. All right, the grenade launcher. The grenade launcher is useful for delivering firepower into hard to reach areas or clearing out potential ambushes. We do not recommend using the grenade launcher in confined areas. So there's the remaster version. There's the original. So again, it has a little bit of a waveriness to it in the model. It's kind of interesting how it does that. I've never noticed that in original Quake 2, but it's really obvious here. So they did away with that. I like the grenade launcher's design, how it's just this big tube that just launches this giant shell, explosive shell. Very cool. All right, the Prox launcher. This one was added in a later expansion pack. When launched into the world, the proximity mines will deploy on a surface and then wait for the enemy to set off their proximity trigger. The Prox launcher gives a high degree of accuracy for placing mines. So basically the grenade launcher reskinned. Original and the remaster. Rocket launcher. The rocket launcher delivers heavy firepower to your target. Be careful not to use this weapon in close combat. All right, let's check out the model. Here it is. We'll hide the controls. Go and see the original. That's the original remaster. I don't know if this is going to be an unpopular opinion, but I always disliked the Quake 2 rocket launcher design. I thought it was one of the weakest rocket launcher designs out of the various Quakes. I also always got confused because you can see the rockets going into it, so I always thought you could load more than one like in Unreal Tournament. I remember always thinking that should have been a feature. Hyper Blaster. A Hyper Blaster is an energy chain gun with no spin-up delay. Its high rate of fire is incredibly effective at destroying the enemy and depleting your energy cells. You know, I always thought the Hyper Blaster should have just been a plasma gun. It's just too similar to the chain gun in my opinion. So there's the original. Again, it's got that little wobbly feature to the model. I wonder what that is. 
But yeah, I always uh, thought a plasma gun would have been a little bit cooler, but the Hyper Blaster is still pretty badass. Ion Ripper. The Ion Ripper fires blasts of glowing energy boomerangs capable of ricocheting off the walls. The Ion Ripper is the perfect weapon for launching attacks around corners and areas out of your line of sight. You know, I never played with this gun until the remaster, so when I picked it up in multiplayer, I was actually like really surprised by it. So here's the original. And here's the remaster. So again, it's just got that wobbliness to the model. Huh. Plasma Beam. It's a high-tech beam of pure flaming death, guaranteed to give anyone in your path a hot time. The Plasma Beam uses cells, but will burn right through them, so use this weapon wisely. So yeah, this is basically the lightning gun from Quake. I just felt like this model, similar to the chain gun, it just isn't very interesting from a first-person perspective. You know, maybe they maybe they made it quickly. <laughs> but I really feel like they should have done something a little bit more interesting with it. The Railgun fires depleted uranium slugs and super high velocities. Take note of the distinctive blue corkscrew trail of smoke caused by the projectile. Or better yet, see how many scumbag strog it goes through before it hits concrete. Probably my favorite video game weapon of all time, the Railgun. Definitely just unique and fun. I love Instagib. Here's the original model. It's remastered. It looks like they lightened it up quite a bit. Yeah, it's just such a great gun. It's so powerful. It's so fun to use. It's so satisfying. It's a skill-based weapon in my opinion. Apparently, an Arnold Schwarzenegger movie called The Equalizer is what inspired the railgun. He used a big frickin' railgun in that movie, and so they put it in Quake 2. Alright, the Phalanx. The Phalanx particle cannon emits two quantum accelerated magnesium slugs at unsuspecting foes. This weapon delivers heavy firepower, but should be used with extreme caution at close range. Alright, let's check this out. So here it is. You know, it's another weapon that I didn't use until I started playing the remaster. Here's the original model. And again, I was surprised by it when I started using it. It's basically a rocket launcher, but it shoots two rockets instead of one, and it's a lot more deadly, and it can kill you as well really fast, like yourself. You'll destroy yourself if you're not careful with this thing. All right, the BFG 10K. Big, uh, frickin' gun. This weapon redefines the word wallpaper. Simply fire the BFG-10K into a small room of unsuspecting Strog and observe the new red paint job. The big fucking gun. Classic. Now, there was no BFG in Quake 1. And, you know, of course they had the BFG in Doom, the Doom games. Here's the original, by the way. So very cool to see the BFG return in Quake 2, and I'm pretty sure it was in all the other id Software titles after that. The Quake ones, that is. Quake 3, Quake Live, Quake Champions, etc, etc. Disruptor! An experimental and super-secret weapon created in the merger of Strog and Human Tech, the Disruptor was long believed to not even exist. It packs a big punch like the BFG 10K and has a high rate of fire, however, it will only target one enemy at a time. Yeah, this is another weapon that I discovered with the remaster. You know, I didn't play a lot of the expansion packs back in the day. Here's the original model. Remaster. Original. Remaster. That's cool. It shoots out like a dark energy beam. Like a, like a cloud almost. And it just sucks people into it and kills them. It's really neat. All right, is that it? it? Looks like that's it, everybody. This is the weapon section of the id Vault. I hope you enjoyed checking that out. If anything, you could kind of see the difference between the original model and the new model. We'll be doing the same in the next video where we go over pickups, and then the following video after that, the final video, will be enemies. So you don't want to miss those. Those will be coming out next. I hope you're enjoying this series. I'm really enjoying making it, going through, learning some of this lore, some of this history of its software and Quake 2. So if you're also enjoying these videos, please make sure to give them likes. So like this video and subscribe so you don't miss the next couple parts coming up, parts four and five, which should be out in the next couple days. 
As always, thank you so much for watching. I always really appreciate it. I'm Salty Octopus, and I will see you next time.